Hi everyone, Sandra Duran Wilson here, and welcome to this week's Mixed Media Soul Sparks. Every week we're going to explore different aspects of mixed media painting, from composition, color, design, surfaces, tools, whatever we come up with. This week, I want to take a look at just a small part of composition and design. You know, there's a whole world of how you create a good composition. And it can have everything to do with texture, with values, with color, with placement. And I want to just look at placement today. What I'm talking about here is where you might place a horizon line. Now, in this piece of paper, I have taken and created a grid. And this is kind of based on a photography method or a composition method called a rule of thirds. So where we have these intersecting lines, you would want your focus to be in one of these areas. So like if you had a face or a person, you'd kind of want them in here. And then other elements that would kind of lead your eye to that compositional focus. But I want to kind of go beyond that. And I look at whether we're having the piece in a vertical fashion. Traditionally, landscapes are looked in this way and abstracts are looked at this way. But what if you start to break those rules? And then again, if you're doing, say, a landscape this way, what if you have a low horizon line or a high horizon line? And I've kind of put some gels and pastes on here that are dry. Now this is the shape of your canvas. The shape can influence how you view the piece too. Rather than a traditional rectangle, this is a more narrow focus. I just want to show you something here really quick on this piece. And play it out here. And the texture on this piece is going to give it a lot of movement, meaning texture is another compositional element because it's going to make your eye go in different areas. So where the paint is thicker, your eye might stay there more. But the texture acts as part of the composition too. I'm just going to, I'm working on this in this direction. So when I wipe this off, the area that was glossy, the, the paint comes off more. Whereas where it's more gritty, the paint's going to hold, it's going to hold the paint there. But what I'm looking at here is this horizon line. And traditionally, you know, we might look at I'm not sure what that was. We might look at the sky as blue, the earth as brown or green, you know. That's, that's the world we live in. So here, if I'm looking at it this way, here's my sky, here's my earth, here's my horizon line. However, what if I flip it over and I create a very high horizon line? I can wipe some of this off. Let's come down into here, change this a bit. This color. And kind of basically turn it upside down. So now I've got a high horizon line. It's interesting that people who tend to live on the planes have 
a low horizon line, meaning that they're used to seeing big sky everywhere. And people that live in the mountains or forests tend to have a higher horizon line because the mountains are up there or trees blocking their view. So now, what if I'm looking at this is my, say it's the earth, the canyons, and here is the night sky up above. So we've completely changed the horizon line. We've moved it. Here, we're back over here. If this is the sky and this is the earth. So think about not only the shape. Here, I've got a square shape. I've put a high horizon line here. This is called an S. I call it the alphabet of composition, and I'll give you this in the notes. But you know, you might look at an S, an X, a T, different ways of creating your composition. So here, this is the rule of thirds, which is kind of loosely based on uh, the golden mean. And I'm starting this S, and it's kind of incorporating all of these different little rectangles or squares. But it would be very different if I looked at it this way, if this were my lower part, and I don't remember what color that was. So if I have one color here, and then this is moving through that. So the way you see it in a square format is different than the way you see it in this uh, shape. So those are all things to look at, you know, creating your grid pattern. I just want to show you this one thing here. So if I were to look at this as an abstract, you know, I might be having this part coming over, and this would be called a cantilevered aspect because most of the mass of what's going to happen over in here, that's not the greatest color for that, but um, then I'm going to have a small color over here. So a cantilever is when you have a large amount here and then a small amount there, but it's tying it together. And using this grid can help you understand where you might have placement. But look at it, if you have it this way, it could actually become a, comp uh, a landscape composition. But in this format, it's unexpected because this is what you would expect to see the abstract in. So here we have an abstract in a landscape composition, and here we have a landscape in an abstract orientation. Lots of different ideas. These are all things to consider before you even begin your painting. Now let me just show you this last cu these couple. It's interesting. I had a, a talk. I was doing a show one time, and I was talking with um, a person who was looking at the work, and he was very drawn to this very architectural piece. Lots of geo, geo uh, not geographics, geometric. Uh, pieces, very linear, geometrics, hard edge. And I asked him, I said, well, what do you think about this other piece? And I took him and I showed him this piece that was very much like this. It was just kind of all over, no horizon line. And he was like, oh, it makes me very nervous. Turns out he was an engineer. But there, this is a different feeling that you're going to get because there's no horizon line. It can be unsettling. The colors are wild. It's like, how do I move through this piece? So some of these lines are a beginning to help your viewer move through the piece. And that's what composition is about. How do you engage your viewer and keep them coming around rather than just shooting off? So if I only had this and it was not a stop here, then the eye might just shoot off. Whereas here, I've got almost a circle. I'm coming back around. So it's another way to work with this non-horizon line by keeping the viewer engaged in the piece. Now here's kind of the opposite of that, and this is working with a grid. So if you look at, you go back to this original piece where I have this grid going on, you can see that I've created it pretty much along the same grid. 
So I've got some dark, some darks. Here I've got a dark, but a high contrast area. So this was painted white like this piece, and then I just brought the stencil in and came back in with the same kind of a blue and used the uh, sponge to create that dark, create a pattern. Oh, I kind of got it upside down. So my intention for this piece is to add a focus. This is going to be the focal element. And whether it's collage that I do, I've kind of got leaves in here, so I'm going with the same theme. But the other thing I would want to do is get just a little bit of a dark somewhere over in here. Because do you see how it feels lopsided? I've got all my darks over here, most of my lighter values over here. So if I brought in just a little dark over into this area, you see how it can bring the eye over there. So these are all ideas of composition that can help you as you're working on your piece. Let's leave it at that. I want to see you work with some different shapes, some different unusual formats. So even if you take your paper like this and you cut it in to the long, narrow shape and use move your horizon line, see the feeling that you get, the reaction you get when you have a high horizon line as opposed to a low horizon line. This is one other piece that I'll just kind of I'll develop and show it to you in the, in the finished video because I'm going to be using lights and darks to move the eye kind of as I did here. And I'm going to start from dark and move over to light, dark to light over there. So you can use color, texture, and placement in your composition to evoke a feeling Perhaps you want somebody to feel expansive or a little uncomfortable. Perhaps you want them to be, feel very calm. So these are all ways that you can achieve that. So I'll put some notes in, some ideas for you, and I'll see you next week. Join the Creative Awakening community on Facebook, where you'll be able to post your art, connect with other creatives around the world, and ask questions. Use the hashtag Mixed Media Soul Sparks when posting your work on social media. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next week.